and welcome to Dotto Tech. In our last show, we began a journey down the road to Linux, which is an alternative to the Windows or Mac operating system. Now, we wanted to take an older PC and install Linux on it, set it up and use it as a main family computer. We wanted to test how difficult the setup process was and to see if we can do all the things that we normally need to do every day on a Mac or PC. So we looked at several different distributions or versions of Linux, and there are dozens to choose from, but I wanted one that would have a short learning curve for people who are comfortable with Windows. So I chose a distribution called Mepis. Now we installed Mepis on this. This is an older P3 800 megahertz computer. It formerly had Windows 98 running on it, for goodness sakes. By no means is this a speed demon, but it does manage to run Linux quite well. Now it only has 256 megabytes of RAM and a 10 gig hard drive. One of the beauties of Linux is the fact that older, slower computers, sorry, didn't mean to hurt your feelings, well, they run just fine with Linux. And this is cool because it greatly extends the life and usabilities of these old systems. The rapid obsolescence of computers has a lot of people very concerned. Linux can be considered a hedge against technology inflation, and it can possibly save our landfills from old and unwanted systems like this one used to be. Unwanted, no more. Now it stands here, a perfectly fine and proud computer. Now, last time we showed you how we can use this computer for the main internet tasks that we use our computer for, web browsing, email, and chat. Well, if you got a house full of teenagers who are always bickering over who gets the computer and when, this is the answer. You resurrect your old systems, turn them into email checking, web surfing, homework machines, and you might just achieve peace at the home front. But it doesn't stop there, because today we want to build on that foundation. What if we want to use our computer for office productivity or digital photography? Let's see. The strengths of Linux will be tested. Now, the fact that it takes less computer to do the same job is a big benefit. And don't forget about the price of the software. It's tough to compete with free. So let's begin today by looking at Office productivity. Now, when I installed Simply Mepis on this system, it installed with a series of Office and productivity tools. And they are organized under the Office menu here in the menu system. And we can see here that I have under the Open Office brand, we have a database program. We have a presentation package, we have a spreadsheet, a word processor, and we also have a contact manager called Contact with a K. Let's take a look at these and see the highlights of them. And we're going to start with the contact manager, which is an answer to Outlook in Windows. It is time, contact, calendaring, and email, and it does all of the same things. When we open it up, it looks an awful lot like Outlook because it's designed to act an awful lot like Outlook. We have it for email. We can set up multiple pop email accounts in it, use it for sending and receiving all of our email. We can manage our contacts in it, keeping a database of all of our different contacts that we have to work with. We also have a calendaring function, which allows us to store and manage a calendar. To-do lists, journals, notes, that rounds out the tools, but the main ones that are most important are the calendaring, contacts, and mail, which is what we really use Outlook for. Now, this is going to work just fine, especially if you keep all of this information on your computer and you don't need to migrate it into other platforms. If you need to move this to a BlackBerry to a Palm, it becomes a little bit more difficult in Linux, sometimes a lot more difficult in Linux, so it's not quite as good an answer in that case. But if you're happy keeping it all on your computer, this is a perfect solution. Now let's move in to the word processor, because the word processor of all the productivity applications is definitely the most important, at least as far as students are concerned. They've got homework to do, they do their homework in a word processor. In open office, the word processor in open office is going to be used a lot. When we open it up, it looks a lot like Microsoft Word, and it acts a lot like Microsoft Word, down to the file structure, so there is virtually no learning curve as far as using it. If we look through all the different menus, we see that it's structured pretty much identically to Word, and if it's not identical to Word, at least all of the commands are logically enough grouped that you can find what you need when you need it. Now, one nice thing about this version of the word processor is it's very much designed with HTML word processing, writing for the web in mind, and it's got a whole bunch of different features that allow us to add hyperlinks automatically and bookmarks, all those sorts of things right within the document. 
We can also do very advanced formatting with it. If we go into the format menu, we can do all of the typical text formatting, but we can also do a lot of structural page type formatting, such as doing things like inserting tables into it, and we can format those tables. So we have all the same kind of structural tools that we need in a word processor. Now, one of the most important things that's going to happen with any document is we need to share that document. Sometimes we need to share it over the internet, emailing it to people. Sometimes other people have to be able to open that document and edit it in other applications, in other operating systems. This is crucial. And in that area, if we look under the file menu, we see the most important bases are again covered. Number one, as far as sharing the document over the internet, we can export this as a PDF, which is Adobe's portable document format, which means people can read the document in Acrobat Reader, which means that we can create documents that people can read no matter what computer they are in anywhere in the world. We can also, if we go save as, and this is really important for doing collaborative work. If you're doing a high school project and you're working in open office and somebody else is working in Microsoft Word on a Windows machine and you want to be able to share the document, in that case we can save it by going through a filter as a Microsoft Word document, which means we can both work on the same document. This is crucial in the, in the real world being able to collaboratively work on documents. So the two most important aspects of sharing are covered, both documents going back and forth into other operating systems, and this will go into the Mac as well as Windows, or sharing files over the internet as PDF documents. Now the other Office tools that we have include the spreadsheet, which I won't show you because, frankly, spreadsheets are really boring and they all look the exact same and they all work the exact same. And I'm not going to show you the presentation package. It works very well. It's not the same. It doesn't work quite the same as PowerPoint does in Microsoft, but presentation packages don't have the same kind of standards built around them now as word processors and spreadsheets do. But it's, if you have to build presentations, you're going to be able to build very nice presentations, save them in multiple formats, and be able to use it in a variety of environments as well. So as you can see, right now, we're in good shape as far as office and productivity applications are concerned. Once again, one of the biggest benefits, this is all free. When we get back, we're going to take a look at photo editing in Linux. All 26 episodes of Dotto Tech Season 3 are available to borrow at participating libraries. Check our website for details.